Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today I want to talk about transitionals, those weird planes that come in between all wooden and all steel. What's up with that? For the longest time, wooden planes were the thing. Now, yes, I know if you go back into history, you will find metal planes that were used in the Roman era, but uh, for most people, a wooden plane was the thing to do because you could make them yourself in the shop as long as you had a blacksmith to make you a blade. And so that being said, anyone out there could then make a tool fairly easily. And that is why they are prevalent up until about the turn of the last century. This is what most everyone used. And then Bailey came along and made the Bailey pattern plane, which Stanley purchased and brought Bailey on, and then there was a whole debacle between the two of them. But they started making the standard Bailey pattern plane, which is the common plane that we all think of when we think of a hand plane now. The standard setup for the adjuster and the way it's all made this kind of became the standard. But there were a lot of people who just loved the wooden planes. And I have to say, there's very little that feels as amazing as running your wooden plane over the work and just feeling the, the action between the two is phenomenal. They are, they are enjoyable to use. And once you learn how to set them up and how to adjust them, they're relatively simple to work with. So why would I want to spend the money to buy a metal plane when I can make my own wooden planes with an old antique iron? And then Stanley and a few others came out with the transition transitional plane. And this is kind of the halfway house. It got people to get rid of their wooden plane in favor for an all steel plane. And particularly this gave you the great feeling of the wood sliding across the work, but with the functionality of a metal plane still having all of your adjusters and knobs. So today I want to look at some of the differences between a transitional plane and a Bailey pattern steel plane. Um, is there any reason to use a transitional over one of these? And uh, how do you pick? Let's take a look. So first of all, let's look at what's the same between the two. Most of them have the exact same lever cap. You just lift it up, pop it out, and then you're going to have the same thing, a chip breaker and iron. They're feeling very similar. Everything inside looks fairly similar. There's frogs. There's two screws holding the frogs down. There's a lever cap screw. There's a lateral adjuster. On the back of both of these, you also have the depth adjuster in there, and they function almost identical. There isn't a tote on the back, so in this case, you're going to hold it more like this as opposed to having a tote where you're holding it more like a grip. But you're still going to hold the front knob fairly similar, pinching it up front and sliding along. One of the biggest differences you'll notice off the bat is that on the steel planes, the frog goes all the way down. And the nice thing about that is it supports the iron all the way down to the back side of the bevel. So the sole, the very tip down here where the sole comes forward, that sole doesn't actually touch the iron. So because of that, you can move the frog forward and backward to close up the mouth or open it up because the frog is actually going to support the iron all the way down here to the edge of the bevel. On the transitional plane, the frog stops here. And so because of that, you can't move the frog forward and backward to close up the mouth. If you move the frog forward, nothing is going to be supporting the iron all the way down here. And your blade will just run along and start chattering because there's nothing supporting the iron down here. So that's why you want to make very sure with a transitional that your frog is perfectly in line with the wooden bed below. We want to make sure that the wooden bed is still supporting the iron. That brings us to one of the biggest drawbacks of a transitional plane is the mouth here. Over time, the wood is going to wear out much, much quicker than the steel. And so you're going to need to flatten it. And the way you do that is you grab another plane and you flatten the sole with another plane. Or you would put it on a flat surface and use sandpaper. But most of the time you just use another plane to flatten your plane. But what that does is it takes material off of the bottom and over time, this sole gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And as it does that, this mouth will actually open up and become wider and wider. Unfortunately, until you start having a plane that looks like this where the mouth is so wide that there is almost nothing in front of the iron, then you'll be getting a lot of tear out with a mouth this big. The historical way to fix that is slap on another piece of wood on the bottom and then carve out your mouth so that you now have a new tight mouth on here. Or you could actually put in a little insert and actually replace the front of the mouth, sliding it back a little ways. But most of the time, people with a transitional actually just replace the entire sole because it's fairly easy to unscrew this, pull all the metal workings off of the wooden sole, and then you can just make your whole new sole with your metal parts already put on there. With a Bailey pattern plane, you can just loosen those two screws and slide the entire frog forward, and that will allow you to cut closer to the mouth. Not to mention, you don't really need to flatten a sole very much, and in most cases, I really only check if the sole is flat once every four or five years. 
it's not that big of a deal with a steel plane. But the other really nice thing about a transitional plane is you have that wooden sole. And few things feel as good as a wooden sole sliding across your work. You don't need to oil it as much, and this will actually slide far easier on the work. And you'll find that it just feels good. It's something that gives you a good tactile response between the two, whereas the steel, it feels a little more clunky. These are a little bit heavier to work with. And so because of that, some people like to use a transitional as they're smoother because it gives you that good tactile feeling between the work and your hands. Another nice aspect to a transitional is if you need a jointer and you need that longer plane, well, you can just take this wooden sole off of here, build a new one that is however long you want it to be. There's nothing saying that you have to use this wooden sole. Whereas with a regular Bailey pattern plane, you can't put another sole on there because the iron can't extend farther forward. And that's why occasionally you might come across the planes that don't have a stamp in the front because the owner decided they wanted to make a new block or they wanted to refurbish it. So they could actually put on whatever block they wanted onto their plane. A while ago, I saw a transitional with the smoothing body, but the wooden sole was almost two foot long. So someone wanted to make a jointer, but all they had was their smoother frame. And nothing wrong with that. You can do whatever you want with your own plane. So in the end, they both do pretty much the exact same work. And you can get these beautiful curls off of either one. But little can beat the feeling of a really nicely set up transitional plane. That wood sole just feels fantastic. And you get these shavings that you really can't tell which one they came from. You just know that they are delightfully thin. So because of the work of the transitional planes slowly changing everyone over to all metal planes, these have become the standard that everyone has. They are far more efficient, they are quick, they are easy, there's less work that you have to do on them, there's less maintenance, you don't have to worry about flattening the sole. They're just there to do the work and they last really well. But a transitional plane feels really good. And if you like that all wooden plane, but you want to have the adjustability of a metal plane and all the features into it, then a transitional might be for you. They're a little bit harder to find, but if you find a good one and set it up well, it'll last you for a long time, or at least until you have to resurface the sole. So I hope you like this video. Tell me down below which one do you prefer? Do you prefer a transitional, an all wooden, or a metal plane? It's kind of interesting to see what different people think. If you did like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And I think that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Ooh, did you see that? That was a fade to black transition. Ooh, that was a film transition. Ah, hey, that's a sergeant transition.